In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I'd like to congratulate my beloved Father, His Grace Bishop Seraphim, and all the fathers of this blessed diocese, and the congregation of this blessed church, and the congregation of the diocese, with the blessed ordination of uh, Deacon Mark to be priest in this blessed diocese. May God bless this ordination for the glory of his holy name, and through this ordination, the service will be multiplied, and God willing, more fruits will be added to the already existent fruit in this blessed diocese. While we are ending the second week of the Holy Great Fast, the Church is asking each one of us, are you on the right way? Are you on the right way? Especially as we read in the book of Proverbs, there are many ways that seem to lead to life, but their end is destruction. And every one of us is on a spiritual journey. And we think there are many ways. But as the Lord said in the Gospel of today, in Matthew chapter 7, which is part from the Sermon on the Mountain, there are only two ways. And every day while we are making choices, these choices affect and indicate which way we are going through. And each way has a gate and has an end and the description of the way and people who are walking in the way. So there are four things actually we need to think about. The gate, the way in itself, those who are going through this way, and the end. Let's start with the gate. There are two gates, a wide gate and a narrow gate. The gate represents the starting point, or the beginning. And what is the wide gate? Wide gate, when you start your spiritual journey, but you are not willing to do any sacrifices on your part. Although the Lord said, if you want to be my disciple, deny yourself carry your cross, and follow me. But some people, they don't want to do any uh, sacrifices. So the white gate, it does not require you to give up anything. For example, now we are fasting, and many people just say, why you should fast? I don't need to fast. So, they are not willing to give up anything. Although if you understand why we fast, fasting actually is a participation in putting to death our members on earth. Yes, literally, we will not put our physical body to death, but it's a participation in this process of putting to death our members on earth, as St. Paul said in Romans chapter 8. As if we are saying to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm willing to participate in your death as you died on my behalf. And this participation in your death will actually make me also participate in your resurrection. But the white gate means I'm not willing to do any sacrifices or to give up anything for Christ. Also, wide gate means you are allowed to bring 
in the spiritual journey whatever you want to bring. If you have a white gate, you can get any type of furniture through this gate. So people start their spiritual journey, journey with materialism, with prejudice, with hatred, with unforgiving spirit, with love of pleasure. All these packages I carry with me and I enter the spiritual journey with this back. Although the Lord said you cannot serve two masters, you cannot serve God and mammon, but many of us, we want to start our spiritual journey with all these baggages, materialism, love of pleasure, unforgiving spirit, etc. Also, why it get means you believe whatever you want to believe and there is nothing wrong and this actually the spirit of these days the relative truth there is nothing wrong any doctrine is acceptable any belief is acceptable our fathers shed their blood to defend the faith, but nowadays we say, it doesn't matter for me. Everything is okay. Why we are separated from each other? So, this is another sign of the white gate. If you are willing to compromise your faith and to accept any teaching as a true teaching, you are entering through the white gate. And unfortunately, this white gate is attractive to many people because there is no restriction regarding your belief or regarding your behavior. No restriction whatsoever. Believe whatever you want to believe. Do whatever you want to do. If it feels good, do it. That is the white gate. It's attractive. But its end is destruction. Also, the white gate opens the way to the path of least resistance. Opens the way to the path of least resistance. On the other side, there is another gate. The Lord called it the narrow gate. Narrow gate. Also, the narrow gate is the starting point in the spiritual journey that leads to eternal life. It is narrow both in width and in height. In width and height. And actually, if you visit old monasteries, you remember the cells of the old monastery literally is narrow in its, uh, the gate is narrow in its uh, width and its height. In order to enter the cell of a monk, actually you need to bow down. And you cannot get big furniture into this cell. So the height is narrow to indicate humbleness, self-denial, and obedience. So every time the monk enters his cell, he reminds himself that I am here because I chose to walk with Christ and to deny myself completely and to live the life of humbleness and obedience. But this is actually not for monks only, but the Sermon on the Mountain was for everybody. Enter through the narrow gate. And also narrow in its width because there is no room for gluttony, no room for luxurious life, love of pleasure love of materialism. So we need to get rid of any consuming desire for earthly goods, any self-righteousness, any unforgiving spirit. And we need, if you want to start your spiritual journey in the right way, you need to get rid of all these things. 
Tomorrow in the Gospel, we will hear about the three temptations. One temptation is about pride. Another is about materialism. And the third one is about desires of the flesh, love of pleasure. Pride, when he told him, throw yourself from the pinnacle of the temple. Love of materialism, when he told him, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. And desires of the flesh, when he told him, Satan told Jesus, turn the stone into bread. We need to get rid of these things if you want to start your spiritual journey from the narrow gate. These two gates lead to two ways. The narrow gate leads to the difficult way. And the wide gate leads to the broad way. And actually, if you notice, people in rebellion to God, they actually name the streets that has bars and all you know, the pleasures of the world, they call it the Broadway. In any state, when you look to the Broadway, this Broadway actually has all the sinful uh, activities. So, what is the Broadway? The Broadway allows, as I said, any behavior you desire. There is no restriction on, on your behavior. And also, there is no need for reformation or changes in your lifestyle. No changes is required. You can live your life as you want. No repentance. No transformation. And people, they think because they are walking in the broad way, they are free. That is the real freedom. Although, in reality, they are slaves to these bad habits. They are slaves to these sinful activities. So what they, be what they believe, it is free, or they are free, in reality, they are slaves. Also, the people in the broad way, they believe they are open-minded open-minded, they accept everything, they allow everything, they are enlightened, they accept any belief, they accept any denomination, they accept any religion, open-minded. And also they view themselves as tolerant, and they will speak to you about the gospel of love and the gospel of tolerance. That is the broad way. And that's why many people walk in it. And nowadays, Broadway is attractive to many people and many youth. The tolerance, the love, the freedom. Also, these definitions are twisted. And the difficult way, actually, if you want to imagine it, it is like you are driving on a, a mountain between two cliffs. That's a difficult way, which means it needs watchfulness. As the Lord said, watch and pray, lest you fall into temptation. So people who are walking in the difficult way, they need to be watchful and careful. In a difficult way, you need to fight the good fight. And you need to strive well. And you need to run the race, as St. Paul said. Difficult way means a change in behavior and to correct your behavior always in order to meet the righteousness of Christ as if you are driving on a very narrow road on a mountain. You need actually to change your way all the time in order to make sure that you will arrive safe. 
So when the Holy Spirit convict me of any sin, I repent and I change my way. So there is always, always transformation and changing. As St. Paul said, from glory to glory in order to meet this image, the image of Christ. Others will perceive those who are walking in the difficult way as they are narrow-minded, they are intolerant, they don't have love, they are not enlightened. You will hear all this descri description. But this way is the way that leads to eternal life. That's why, as I said, the Lord is asking you today, are you on the right way? After two weeks in the great fast, are you in the right way or not? So there are two gates, two ways, and two groups of people. The broad way, we have many people go and buy it. Many people, the majority. And as I, as I told you, it is attractive. Because on the wide gate, there is a sign that says, Come as you are, no changes are required. We will accept you as you are, and after this, you don't have to change. Come with your beliefs, whether right or wrong, everything is right. Come with your behavior, whether right or wrong, everything is right. Make your own rules. Make your own belief system. Do what you want to do. It's attractive to many people. And the Bible told us, during the time of Noah, all the people were walking in the right way, in the, in, sorry, in the broad way, except eight persons, Noah and his family. During Sodom and Gomorrah's destruction, everybody in Sodom and, and Gomorrah were walking in the broad way, except three persons, Lot and his two daughters. Those who came out of the land of Egypt, all of them were walking in the broad way. All of them were destroyed in the wilderness of Sinai, except two, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Yafinna. So the broad way attracted many, many people. If you are following the gospel of majority, everyone does it. You are walking in the broad way. And the Lord told us, there are many who go and buy it. But the difficult way, there are few who find it. Few who find it. So it doesn't mean that the majority believe in it, or the majority walk this way, then you are in the right way. And the Lord told us, strive to enter through the narrow gate. Strive. So it needs to strive, to struggle, to fight the good fight. And more than this, he told us, for many, I say, will seek to enter and will not be able. So some people will have the desire to enter, but they will not be able. And this verse actually should make us careful why these people are not able to enter through the narrow gate although they desire to enter through the narrow gate the main reason because they want to enter the narrow gate through their own effort without realizing without relying on the grace of God if you want to enter through the narrow gate by your own efforts you will not be able but through the grace of God, you can put yourself to uh, denial, and then you can enter through the narrow gate. That's why 
Mar Isaac of Syria said, if you want to repent and you believe there is another way to repentance other than prayer, you are deceived. Why? Because through prayer, I will get the grace of God. So any effort I'm trying to do away from prayer, it, it's deception. You are deceived. But through the grace of God, through prayer, that's why you hear all the time during this great fast, fasting and prayer. Fasting alone, you put yourself and you try to discipline your body, you cannot enter the narrow gate. But with fasting, there are prayer because the grace of God that will help you to enter through the narrow gate. And at the end, we spoke about two gates, two ways, two groups of people. There are two destinations. People who enjoyed the life of pleasure, life of what they call freedom, life of uh, the least resistance. Unfortunately, at the day of judgment, the broad way leads to destruction, everlasting destruction. Those who did not obey the gospel of God, those who believed what they want to believe and did not abide to the teaching of the church and the teaching of the scripture, those who conducted themselves as they want to conduct without actually following the moral code of the scripture and without being united with the true bridegroom. The wide gate, the broad way, leads to destruction. But on the other side, those who choose to, through, to go through the narrow gate and to walk in the difficult way, this leads to everlasting life. At the day of judgment, they will hear the voice of God well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful on what's least, I will appoint you on what's much. The eternal life will be given to them as gift from God because all their life they were struggling to live the life uh, of holiness and without holiness we cannot see God. They choose to be slaves of God and not slaves of sin. They chose to be slaves of God and not slaves of sin. They carried in their life the fruit of holiness and righteousness because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why they will enter into the eternal life. And again, it's your choice. As we read in the book of De Deuteronomy, I said before you, the way of life and the way of death. Choose life to live. It's your choice which gate you will enter through, which way you will walk by, which group of people you will accompany and walk with them. By making these three choices, you are also choosing your destination, either life or death. May the Lord grant all of us to be children of life and children of light. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.